uh, you are, a lot of people know you from uh, your Google Cloud days and now you're at GitHub. So thank you so much for taking the time to give us a few minutes on security in GitOps. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so as you just said, you know, I'm Maya. I'm a product manager over at GitHub working on software supply chain security. And we'll talk about what GitOps means for security. So I'm actually going to start with the motivation behind this, which is typically, you know, like, so why, why GitOps, right? Most of you at this point have heard the term DevOps. I know a lot of what Cornelia was just talking about was, you know, speed of development and, and, and enabling developers to go faster. This is really a shift in recent years. DevOps is really a shift to make developers more accountable for operational issues. So rather than separating development from operations, DevOps, you know, claims that the responsibility for these functions is joint between all parties that write, ship, and manage that code. Well, the same shift that you've seen with a move towards DevOps generally has also been felt within security specifically. And this is commonly called DevSecOps. It's about making everyone accountable for security as part of the application development lifecycle as well. I think DevOps is not, uh, DevSecOps is not the best term because it makes security special and the reality is every function should be integrated this way. I personally prefer the term uh, continuous security, drawing a parallel to continuous integration and continuous delivery, that you should always be continuously integrating security. So what is the parallel? Well, in, in DevOps, everyone becomes accountable for outages, even if you don't manage the infrastructure. And in DevSecOps, everyone becomes accountable for vulnerabilities, even if you didn't write the software. So just like the business goal of DevOps is fewer outages, the business goal of DevSecOps is no data loss and also no, you know, fewer outages, You know, CIA triad of, of, of security here. So to make this possible and to hold teams accountable for what they develop, this in practice has meant shifting left to move processes earlier and earlier in the development lifecycle by moving steps like testing, including security testing, from a final gate at the end of the development lifecycle to an earlier step done as part of every iteration. Fewer mistakes are made, it's cheaper to address common concerns, and developers can move more quickly. And all of those apply to security. It's cheaper to address a potential breach before it happens, and it's critical to adjust the security vulnerability as quickly as possible by moving to quickly fix it. And so now that we agree that there's a motivation for GitOps, let's talk about what GitOps is and what it means for security. Uh, GitOps capitalizes, literally, on the trend to think about everything in your environment as code. It's infrastructure as code, sure, but also config as code and policy as code and anything else you can think of you know, star as code. But it's not just a mindset, it's the system that you build on top of your code to make deployments as automated and error-free as possible. GitOps is about pushing a change to code that's reviewed and then using automation to do all the hard stuff of deploying, monitoring, and adjusting live changes in production. So for security, what we actually see is that GitOps is the system that best supports the ideals laid out for DevOps and specifically for DevSecOps, right? GitOps allows you to separate deployments from development so that you can deploy as often as you want, uh, as often as you want, which in practice is very, very frequently. And that means that you can use immutable infrastructure. You know, what's really great about immutable infrastructure, if something goes wrong, including if an attacker is on your system, then you know immediately. Also, if something goes wrong, you can immediately fix by redeploying your environment. So immutability of your infrastructure protects you from making changes um, and protects you by making changes that are easier to detect and easier to reverse in your environment. By using Git and managing your infrastructure and policies and applications from there, you have a single source of truth for your environment. Having a single source and a single place for your code to live gives you a single process to make changes. You can implement necessary controls and gates on this process to make sure that you can meet any security needs you have for your development pipeline. And lastly, and this is the most important point, developer velocity. We know from the DORA State of DevOps, DevOps reports that developers can move faster when they have version control, when they have continuous integration, test automation, and other tooling that's available with Git. In DevOps, this matters specifically with mean time to recovery. And I know Cornelia was just talking about some of that as well. So for example, to respond after an outage. In DevSecOps, this matters the most with mean time to remediate, which is also MTTR. <laughs> so having version control means that I can know when I need to upgrade, if I'm susceptible to vulnerability, and having sufficient testing in place means that I can very quickly deploy a fix and know that it won't break my infrastructure. And in fact, this is what we've seen with GitHub. GitHub has a free feature called Dependabot, which sends you a pull request to automatically update a vulnerable dependency to a known fixed version. It's triggered automatically when you add a new dependency to your environment or a new vulnerability is discovered in an existing dependency that you have. And these updates are on by default for public repos. For repos that have Dependabot security updates enabled, the mean time to remediate or MTTR is only 40 days. 
And fortunately or unfortunately, I can't compare this to repos without the features enabled on GitHub, since we respect your privacy. And if you don't turn the feature on, I, we don't know about your vulnerabilities. So I have to compare to industry metrics here. The industry says that this typically takes months currently. Sonatype says that MTTR on a project on average is 180 days, and Sneak finds this for open source projects to be more than two years. So getting, getting that metric, that key metric for your repo down to 40 days is a huge improvement. And by using GitOps to declare your dependencies, you can automate their security. So if we dig a bit deeper, GitOps specifically improves the security of several aspects of your development pipeline, of your code itself, and anything else that you keep in code, how you make changes to that code, and how you make changes in production. So for your code and anything else that you use a code, anything else that you keep as code, I should say, using Git means that you have a static file that you can, you can compare your requirements to. If your compliance requirements are defined in YAML, it's pretty easy to check if you're meeting them. If your access policies are declared in a config file, that's, and that's the only way to get access, then again, you actually know who has access to what, and you can go verify that in code. Then when you make changes, you have versioning so that you know what you shipped and are able to roll back. And you understand where you came from with comments and reviews to know why you made the decisions you did. You have a commit history, which is effectively an audit trail of what happened to your repo. And you can use signed commits to give accountability and traceability to track back who made changes. And lastly, for your production environment, as I mentioned already, the biggest change is having a single source of truth with a single process. It's a single set of tests, a single set of security scans, a single set of permissions that you have to implement. But it's also completely removing humans who are error prone from making these changes. So I've seen a fairly common setup at larger customers who have a containerized pipeline. They have an internal artifact registry where scan and approve packages, including base images, are copied. Developers use these and commit changes to the dev environment, only touching that environment. And then once committed, a job automatically builds and deploys to the test environment, which automatically runs tests and sends results to the developer. If those tests pass, another job will automatically publish a completed image to a second, more locked down registry, which then deploys from test to prod. So they've created a pipeline where developers only need to develop, but any operational or security control can be automatically verified or enforced as part of that pipeline. And using such a setup, you can ensure separation of duties and, and least privilege by only having that single job that can actually deploy your supercritical application. So what that means altogether is that using Deva, uh, using GitOps, you have, you have stronger controls in your code, um, stronger controls for anything that lives in your code and how you change it. It also means you can effectively use immutable infrastructure, have a single source of truth for your environment, and ensure develop, developer velocity, all leading to better supportability and also better security. So you can have that continuous security that we talked about. And so then next time you're thinking about GitOps, talk to your security team, please. Um, I'm sure they'll want to know, but also well instrumented, you'll be making not only your job easier, but their job much easier as well.